We're going to get into a, the sales here in a bit, but I also want to discuss while we're pulling the orders about buying. When to buy, where to buy, how much to buy, when not to buy, and some of my strategies on how I look to buy inventory for my store. Okay, we're going to pull our orders here and then talk a little bit about buying and some buying strategies and where buying, where I'm at with buying right now. Um, but I got this first card here. This is a <clears throat> card I just picked up at a card show this past weekend. A bunch of dollar game used jersey memorabilia type cards. And I got this uh, Gideon Wells Historic Relic card, which sold for $5.99. It's in the little packs of packs on the counter here that I haven't put away yet. Um, you can see some other jersey cards in here. I've got a, picked up a few of these Mike Evans, a couple of these other football ones here. It's a hockey Timu Solani jersey. Um, and then I got a couple of these historic ones. This is the one that sold. It's not bad. I paid probably about 70 cents with my discount per card. And that one sold for $5.99. Um, so I'll take that. Especially right now, sales have not been as heavy. So even a, a quick, quicker, smaller sale is, is, a, is a good one to get. All right, next one is an AJ Brown mosaic. I got to dig for that one. And uh, speaking of that, I'll give you a little update on the drawers here. Um, I did completely finish out this drawer now. Got a few packs in this drawer. Um, part of these packs up here are the stuff that was in the front of this drawer. So those are all, all uh, skewed and packed now. So now I can start grabbing this row. I'll probably just grab the whole row. This was just stuff I ripped out of packs that I just listed and then stuck in the drawer that way. I don't know. Um, it was something I did back in the day. This is from like 2019, 2020 stuff. There's some Bowman U in here. So anyway, I'll get those skewed up and then that will open that the whole rest of that drawer. Because as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty full on my box here. Now, um, I did just pull packs forward and got a bunch of packs out of this box, but I had a ton of stuff sitting on this desk and got them all into this sort of backup fill box is the best way I can put it. Um, and then when I dig this row of stuff out to start getting them listed, <clears throat> I'll take the next packs that would go in here and I'll fill this row. And then once that's done, I'll work on this row, uh, which is a lot of Prism Draft, some NFL 5, stuff like that. And keep going but at least these aren't super full drawers they're going to give me a little extra space for more packs and then as well as this final row here which is just some random football um that stuff is going to be good to get get bagged and find a place for it anyway so that's where we're at with the drawers we'll skip that aj brown one for now we'll dig him out we've got some platinum stuff here these are all in the cabinet now which is good Let's see here. So this is 11, 1, 24, 5. They're all in the same bag, which I love. So this is all stuff I just picked up at the card shop recently. So what do we need? We need bullseye? No, we don't need bullseye. <laughs> we need... Uh, let's see. We need this one, right? We need Bishop. We need Namor. We need Nova and Hawkeye. There's Nova, and there's Hawkeye. So there we go. Nice uh, sale on those, $12.25. I paid less than 50 cents a piece for them. I still think there's some good stuff in those boxes. I was trying to pace myself a little bit on it, especially as there wasn't, like I can't get much of an additional deal since it's at a card shop. Uh, but now they drop the price, so. Now I got to get over there and do some digging and pull some more stuff out. All right, we've got a Bo Jackson here, 816, bag 24, which of course is the first one in the next drawer. That's typically how that goes. 
So we just need a Donruss Bo Jackson. We sold for a dollar ninety-nine. <clears throat> We've got another newer card we just sold. It's, it's crazy how you can list something and it sells instantly, and then you got something else. Even if you price it right, or it's a good card, or a good player, sometimes the stuff just sits, and you have to kind of wait it out until you get a buyer for it. All right, I need 11, 20, 24. The first bag. Of course, those are all 11, 20, 24. Not a right one. Uh, here it is. <clears throat> so this one, I need... I got a bunch of... Uh, this is all Sonic stuff, though. 11, oh, because I need bag 7, that's why. I wasn't looking at the number correctly. <clears throat> so some stuff I just listed yesterday. Again, quick flips, love it. No promotional fees because I didn't promote it yet. So I've got this Winner D Tops Gold, black gold card. And sold for $350. So since we're we're talking about buying and I'm going back to the shop and all that, this this is a topic that I think um, should probably get talked about a little bit more than it does, because I think the buying part is fun and it's considered you know the easy part. I don't think it is, uh, which is why I want to talk about it. But then everybody buy, they buy, 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 you know, so, you know, pick out what you want to get, you know, what you think you can resell, whatever, and then complain when you can't sell. Well, maybe it's because the buying wasn't done correctly. Here's Fifi from Tiny Tunes, sold for $1.89, and I think that's, that's something that, uh, is causing some problems especially now when sales maybe aren't as great this time of year and you, it, they don't just really walk out the door you kind of have to try and you got to have good stuff and all that kind of thing price correctly um, but it also is a good time to buy so i think the biggest thing to focus on is are you, when i look at a card in a box do, is, is the card going to sell fast or, or am I going to have to hang on to it? Uh, likelihood, anyway. Of course, you don't know for sure. But let's say <clears throat> let's say we're um, right at, before the season here, okay? And I've got this Ellie De La Cruz card, rookie card that I find. Now, he was a hot rookie. It's a nice-looking card. They're not very hard to pull. And there's a bunch of other Ellie cards out already. So I think that will sell for good money. By the way, I sold this Mike Trout Auto Patch replica card for Top Insert. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, Five ninety nine I got for that. Uh, same thing out of the card shop boxes. But I think what you want to look at is how much profit do I need and how long am I going to have to hang on to something. So something like that Ellie card, if I can get it for fifty cents and I can sell it for five bucks, um, I don't necessarily have to sell it right away because. Uh, as the baseball season comes back around, he'll get hot again. Um, hot as in uh, demand for buys. I have a big vintage football order here, but there are hardly any of them are bagged. So I'll start working on the bagged ones. We'll have to finish this order later. Um, so I think the key thing there is just to make sure that you're not putting out bigger money for stuff you got to sit on. Because when that money isn't working for you... Uh, that's a that's kind of a problem. You need to be able to. You should pay up a bit for things you can sell right away, and then only buy stuff. I think it's the Donruss. Yep, yeah. only buy stuff that, um, you know, for real cheap that you, that you have to hang on to, because it doesn't matter really if you tie up that capital. And I think that's easier said than done because. You know, who knows what you're going to find. If you're buying a lot of your inventory at um, shows and things like that, it's it's whatever you walk into. You can't really pick and choose. Now, if you're shopping online, you're buying lots or you're buying collections. Um, there's some more advantage there. You can do a lot more deep dives. You have more time to do research and look at other prices and how things are selling. But at a show, it kind of puts you on the spot. And that's why I, th I said I think it's something we should talk about more because 
if you don't know what you're doing when you're buying at a show, I don't think you should be uh, buying at a show. Not for resale inventory anyway. I have to leave that one there. It got a little too packed in. Um, so you want to make sure that you are ready to take on whatever you might find there and be able to know if you should buy it or not. So I think doing a little research ahead of time, you know, uh, if, if you watch all the sports, you're probably fine. But um, if you're more like me and you don't, and you just kind of need to at least go in with, well, who's hot right now and what stuff is selling and what sports are, you know, coming into the playoffs and things like that so that you know what, you, it gives you some, some angle right off the bat of what you can do in that show for buying. 427. So now my current strategy, buying changes all the time for me. That's the other thing. I don't think you should just sit in it. Well, anything really in business to just sit on it is not usually a good choice because things change too much over time, you know, economy, politics, you know, money, um, you know, markets, the players, the, there's just a lot that happens that you have to constantly review it. Uh, we got another Pete Rose here. So what I'm currently doing is I am buying, still bought, doing most of my buying at shows. I still feel like that's the best value, uh, and I can get the best cards that way. Um, but I'm, I'm buying a little bit less now that I've got a lot of my, my bulk stuff that I had li to, to list. Now that I've got a bunch of it listed and I'm kind of moving out of that. Now I'll be buying a little bit heavier again, because I always want to have stuff to list. 1985. Um, but I don't want to have like warehouses of stuff laying around uh, you know unless like i said you get it so extremely cheap that it, that's the only thing that makes sense but paying for storage units and doing all that stuff um you know really starts eating into your money if you can't move the stuff that fast all right so I'm for. now if you do whatnot and you do um you know, other live auctions, auctions on eBay, you know, if you're, if you're putting this stuff up super cheap just to, to get it gone, Joe Flacco, super rookie, love it, then that's maybe a different story, then maybe it doesn't matter as much. The, the price you get it for is going to matter even more, um, because you're not going to sell it for as much, or sell it for what you want, I guess is maybe the better place to put it. You're going to sell it for whatever it goes for. In those types of situations, we have Johnny Bench here. 10, 14, 5. So my current strategy is going to be continue to do the show buying, but I'm looking for things that I don't currently have. I've got almost my entire full store. Johnny Bench, the manager there. Oh no, he was still a catcher there. Um, to buy stuff that I don't currently have, uh, which is always kind of a goal, but it's been even more of a focus now that I need to really boot up the second store. Here's another one that I got to pull out of. You would think with so much of it skewed and bagged that I would hardly ever have anything come out of the unskewed stuff, but I still do. Hence the motivation to keep doing it. Like I said, at least when something sells out of it, so it's this 89 score Willie Galt card, the, at least when something sells out of it, it'll never go back in there because I think cards only go in bagged now. So that's the, the one nice consolation to, to that part is I'll never have to deal with that card again coming out of a non-bag spot. 8 one, 17 Yeah, it's right here at the end. So I'm still trying to buy bigger bulks. Um, right now is th the main reason I'm buying, uh, outside of the fact that I've really caught up on stuff to list. So I've got this... Pre-production, oh no, this is the uh, uh, Fleer, like, Provisions card there. I think that's the one. I don't think I have a different one in here. Appears to be. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the thing, I think, with trying to uh, 
constantly play that balance thing. You know, I, did, I didn't want to buy a ton when I had just bought 40,000 cards that I had to get through. And, you know, as I start to dig through them and I'm getting sales on them. Here's another non-skewed card, another vintage 71 tops. Uh, Terry Hanratty, it sold for uh, $2.99. And now we've got a non-sport. So I think um, that's going to be my current strategy for, for a while. Now, one of the things that I really enjoyed this past weekend at a show I was at, uh, the show the weekend before didn't have very many dealers I could buy from, and I was trying to do some deals there because um, I was trying to make some connections and talking to, oops, there's another bag, talking to, um, oh, where is it? Where is this bag? Talking to some, um, dealers, you know, about, about the goat show and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was trying to give them some business too. Here we go. Batman and Joker there from the master series, $4.99. I picked that up at the national. So probably, probably a quarter, 50 cents. I think from that dealer was what I spent. Uh, 11.18.7. This one ended up in the box now. So here's another one I just picked up at the show this past weekend. 11, 18, 7. So they're kind of organized in the box, but they're not as well organized as what they get to be in the chair. Or chair. Uh, cabinet, for sure. 11, 18. Where's the other 11, 18s? Here. There must be over here. Here it is. It's a bunch of jersey cards again. So this came from that dealer where I bought all the $1 jersey cards. I got a Nick Chubb. Uh, game worn jersey here and this one here sold for eight dollars and 99 cents so those, these were super good deal at a dollar uh i actually ended up being about 70 cents i did get a rob gronkowski numbered out of 99 number one out of 99 um rookie jersey card out of there it sold for 20 bucks pretty much instantly here's another non-skewed card it's a pac-man sticker so we'll pull that later uh, 11, 11, 24. We got another vintage football. Vintage football has been pulling out lately. So we got a Pat Fisher. Where is this? Nope, that's not it. There he is. And I've been just trying to focus more on getting to certain shows where I need to get inventory and, um, you know, and then spending the rest of my time just really building on what I have, especially with 1127 and the same thing here. Here it is. So got another one that we just listed. Uh, this is a first day issue. I had a few of these far first day issues. This one right here sold for 20 bucks. Not bad. Um, So that's kind of where, where I'm focusing on it. I'm only going to buy stuff if, if it's a, a, you know, a pretty solid deal because right now I think buyers hold the cards, pun intended, being that uh, sales maybe are a little slower for dealers this time of year, you know, things like that. A diamond great, who is this? Is that Ted Williams, I think? Here he is, Harmon Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew for $2.69. Came in my big box buy, so I got about $0.08 cents into that one. So I'm going to make the dealers, you know, want, you know, make me want to take their stuff. Uh, that's the, that's the goal here. 11, 18, 24, 5. So we have another card that we just bought. 11, 18, 24, 5. Here it is. And uh, keep, keep them in that position if I can, um, using the leverage to get, get stuff for a good price. Here's a Neymar throwing out the first pitch. Love that one. So for $3.99. I think I got that out of the dime box, actually. So that was a really good buy. We got a Boomer Esiason, not quite vintage, it's 1989 tops. 
Um, and then the other thing is I'm just looking for stuff, again, like I said, that I don't have or don't have a lot of right now. So a little bit of WNBA stuff, um, trying to get some um, 2024 football stuff because I, didn't, I haven't really much ripped much product or anything. And I need some of that. That stuff helps you move some of the older stuff too. Here he is. Boomer and Sison, Tops All Pro. So for $269. And just try to kind of pick up a lot of that type of stuff. And then I really like the jersey card buy. Uh, and it's been profitable already for me. Um, and, and, you know, I think the dime box buys uh, is something I'm definitely going to continue doing. I've definitely found value out of those. Uh, still consistently and I want to make sure I don't don't give those away here's another one that's not in a skew yet it's a couple of uh, chase cards from um, garbage pill kids I was getting those for eleven dollars a box uh, I got sold those just those two stickers for ten dollars so that's pretty good um, and uh, just keep looking at the dime boxes is just like a simple way to take a chance on something and you know maybe get a few sneaky good sales where um, maybe I would have stuff that I couldn't normally get a sale on I guess is a good way to put it so the other thing I um, might start doing is doing some auctions just throwing some stuff on there I like using the dime cards for that because if I can sell it for 99 cents, um, you know, with some, some shipping or, or however I plan to to price that out, you know, to be profitable, I can do that easily with with a dime card, uh, even if it only gets one bid. So I'm trying to protect the downside to the auction. I used to run auctions every single month. Um, and I did it mainly with like Favre overstock because I had so much Favre based stuff. Here's another card I just bought um, out of a 50 cent box. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is, very back. Jerry Rice, Top's Finest. Sold for five bucks, nice. But I used to do that and then it just it, it's kind of time consuming because when they end and they don't sell, you got to go back and pull them or relist them. So you got to kind of keep them organized. And and at the time, I really just wanted to focus on, there's another card I just listed. All the new stuff is selling. What's up with that? 11.23, here we go. This is a Uno card. Um, Patrick Sertain, it looks like, $1.79. Patrick Sertain. I think he's towards the back. I thought he was one of the first ones I listed. I could be wrong. There, nope, that's Singleton. There he is. So I'd really like to uh, to get back to, you know, once, once I get the store maxed out here pretty soon, I really want to get back to doing some more regular auctions and just trying to rotate some stuff around a little quicker that way too. So we'll see. Um, otherwise I might get back onto whatnot and just try to do some sun death stuff on there. It's a Stimpy sticker, nice, $4.99. But we'll see, because you have to constantly grow, expand, Try new platforms, try new, you know, ways to do the work. Um, that's how you get that growth. 322.8, another Brewer's Police card. And at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not giving away the house. So you don't want to do a bunch of auctions and not, not get anything out of it either. That doesn't serve much purpose. A Dr. Doom card. 11.5. This is in the, this should be in the drawers. 11.5, yep. 11.5, 4. Here we go. So let me know what your thoughts on, on buying are and what you're doing right now for your buying strategies. But I'm really focusing on 
not so much like how much I'm buying, but more like prices and um, just stuff I don't I don't have. You know, anything you, you think you can flip quickly, uh, especially if, if, like I said, if you get it for a really good price, I mean, that that's changes things a little bit. But if it's just like stuff that could be sitting around for a while, I think uh, I think the the ball is in your favor, or balls in your court, whatever you want to call it, to you know put some pressure on that price and try to get it for an even better price um, because this this time of year the market's a little slower. All right, seven twelve. Now we just got our first snowfall here and that's usually kind of the big change of um, habits for people where I live, where we get snow and weather, winter weather and all that. They now will not be going anywhere. So there's going to be a lot more um, people buying and doing different things. Here we go. Dave Klingman. Nice. Vintage baseball came out of the jump, you know, the monster boxes. 250 I got for that one. I got a few more of him, I think. So I think, you know, not not just the, um, you know, the holiday shopping stuff is picking up, all that. There's also just people who are in the hobby that want cards that now have the time to um, be able to do that shopping online and stuff. And pick up things that they were maybe putting off because they were running to baseball camps and you know all this other stuff I'm not gonna say there's absolutely nothing going on because that's not true either but it does tend to get slower and um, tends to have less money flowing when uh, when you're when you're at home more as far as like out for other activities here he is Emmett 91 Bowman. Cool card there. So I got a bunch of Emmett and Barry and a couple of Farbs in this one. 8 1, 17. There we go. 8 12. But I, one, the thing I like the most about buying is that's where you can see your profits. So. Uh, we've kind of mentioned that before on this channel, and I think others, you know, others who know economics and business will also say, you know, you make the money when you're buying, so you know, it's it's an important part of it, and don't overlook it just to, I gotta get stuff. Well, you do, but you also gotta get stuff that you can sell, and uh, especially now, you know, maybe when the hobby was like ultra hot. Where is this card? Um, there it is. Barry Sanders. Playoff. Maybe you could kind of buy anything to some degree um, and get, get some movement out of it, but that's not really the case anymore. And as far as, like, buying with the intention to sell this time of year because of Christmas, um... That can be tough too because who knows what a shopper is looking for for someone else. Um, it ha it definitely happens. I got a bunch of sales last year from customers who that was literally what they told me. Oh my, my husband's into Star Wars. Can you put together a bunch of vintage Star Wars for me? Or hey, you know my dad's a big fan of John Elway. Do you got some cool John Elway cards you can send me? Um, or what can you tell me about this card or whatever it is? So there's definitely sales opportunities for us too for Christmas shopping. But I think what, what you're going to get more of, or what I always got more of, was uh, buyers who came in buying for themselves. So I don't know if they're buying for Christmas for themselves or they're now done with their Christmas shopping and expenses and now they can go back to themselves. Um, you know, some of them, some people maybe, uh, you know, get a Christmas bonus. You know, there's other things that, that play into it where that money might be coming in from your actual customer, your your card 
collecting person and not necessarily a shopper looking for uh, gifts. All right, what do we got here? We have one of these classic images, Barry Sanders. So we'll see how it goes. I, I have high expectations for the holiday season. I know the economy is a little bit of, of, of in flux right now. With You know, we got all the stuff, you know, everything else going on in the world, we'll just say. Um, I think that that might play some role into a little bit more conservative shopping season, but I don't know that for sure. Um, it doesn't, it, it's not like that. That's what's being said. Like that's the obvious thing from, you know, economist point of view or anything like, Oh, we're going to have a dead Christmas sales. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be any of that kind of extreme. The economy is still pretty good. Um, but it might change just for um, like volume wise, right? I think there might be a little bit more conservative thoughts on spending. Uh, not that people maybe don't even have the money or don't have, you know, the means to buy, but they they might just be holding off. There's another 91 Bowman. That's Barry this time. But typically my best sales months of the year are December through March and a little bit of early April. And then April, you know, people are paying taxes, they're starting to get back to, um, you know, spring activities, camping, all that kind of stuff. You can start getting out a little bit um, in certain areas of the country. So then I think it, you know, things kind of recede again a little bit. It's not, it doesn't become the biggest focus. Here we go, Proline memorabilia. So I sort of expect that. I mean, that trend has been happening for me for as long as I've been doing this. So I, I pretty much expect that to still happen that way. To what scale? I don't know. We'll find out. Here's another card I just bagged. 11, 14, 19. So this was when I was bagging. Um, here it is. Some Farve uh, inventory. So I've got this. Let's see, Gallery Choice card. It was not even listed at the time. So I listed it and then it sold pretty much right away. So it's Critics Choice from Topps Gallery. Let's get these put back away. So I think buying needs to continually happen because you need new products, you need new hot players, you need rookies, you need um there's there's things in those new products you get that you just can't replicate with the stuff you currently have so i think it's it's crucial to do that maybe just moderate it a little bit or really look for the deals since the it's the slower time in the market take that advantage and still do your buying but try to get even better prices 8 20 24 i think that's all all right, we had a lot of orders this yesterday, so we're it's going to take a bit to pull all these. Thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate you. This is Pinnacle Men of Autumn. Reggie White. Nice. We'll just keep along the train here doing this. So other buying strategies are, you know, buying, going on auctions and trying to get them cheap. Because like I said, stuff isn't selling us. Great this time of year. Well, that might be your perfect time to try to snipe some stuff or um, buy lots. You know, maybe you can get lots a little cheaper and then split them up and get them listed for, you know, when the markets pick up a little bit. I've had great sales. Uh, mine haven't really slowed down um, other than sort of the natural amount, I guess. That's the way I want to put it. Uh, this is Quantum Motion. Brett Favre, Collector's Edge insert. So it's, it's pretty much right where I thought it would be. It'd be nice to be a little higher than where I thought it'd be. That's what you always want. Um, but it doesn't always work that way either. Sometimes you make predictions and 
projections based on prior information and that is literally good information because that is what you're experiencing. There's a Reggie White career highlights card. So if your data was good and things are coming out exactly the way you thought, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. It means you, you have good data. 11-2. Yeah, I really want to try to buy more. Here's a Crash the Game Berry. Try to buy a lot more non sport stuff and um, just sports that don't have a lot of cards. Uh, boxing right now is kind of big with um, the Tyson match that just happened. It's an interesting boxing match. And production for that matter. Netflix's production of it was. You could tell it was their first live sporting event. Um, but I, anyway, you know, the more you see of stuff like that, the more the cards make sense. Oh, well, that is one card. Which card am I looking for here? Another Reggie White, it looks like. A Reggie White action-packed card. Oh, way back here. There he is. A bunch of old Reggie White stuff out the door here. Um, I'm interested, uh, this weekend I'm going to the Madison Card Show. It'll be really interesting to see if the crowd is exactly the size I expect it to be. You know, if it's a little bit smaller, because it was a little smaller at the Chicago, Chicago, at the, um, uh appleton show this past week than it than it has been so it'll be interesting to see if there's impact on that show at all i know it's sold out dealer wise it's always it's always sold out that's a, been a long running popular show it's the only one in the area so um kudos to Bo for running a, a great ship there but uh yeah we'll see if if there's less attendance you know it's also thanksgiving weekends and that might matter to some people i don't know um, others maybe not. It is still a very male-dominated hobby, so sometimes I look at stuff like that like, okay, well, if, um, you know, traditionally if you have, like, a bunch of women and their friends going out and doing shopping and wrapping gifts and, you know, whatever your, kind of your Christmas Thanksgiving traditions are, um, you know, we could get those gentlemen who don't participate in that come into the card show and spending their their day there so yeah so i'm excited for that show I, I only can get to it like once or twice a year um i always find decent stuff there and again i think it's a good it's a good buyer position time so i want to i want to be at a good show where i can leverage that as best as possible all right, where is this card? Here he is. Action, action pack berry. And I might stop back at the shop today, take a look at those cards again. Now that they're half price, or not half price, but they're instead of two for a dollar, they're three for a dollar. And. Um, just see what else is there. Maybe maybe now there's more value in something I passed on at 50 cents that I can buy at 30 cents. So that would be the, the take on that one. Here he is. Six, and then eight, 13, bag four. I love SKU system though. I mean, I can just rip through these orders so fast. It's unbelievable compared to how I was doing it back in the day. It's a cool card, the Super Bowl game card from Classic. See up there. Forgot to bring my bin over here with me this morning. Normally I have my scanner catch bin I set next to me and I kind of pile all my orders into that. 
and I left it over on the other table. Here's a couple of ASG baseball cards. Those are still in the box sets down there. I got two Fernando Tatis that I sold for six bucks. I'll have to pull those out. Seven, sixteen, twenty-four. It's gonna be in the previous drawer. Yeah, I, I keep getting closer and closer and closer to finally just finishing out these two cabinets and being able to build on the uh, the new one that I just installed. So that's that's a big motivator for me right now to try to try to get all this stuff. Uh, there it is. A nice Kung Fu Panda Sparkly Tigress card, $4.99. So just keep plugging along. Something that's not in a bag today will either be hopefully in a bag tomorrow or um, will be sold and shipped out and then not having to be dealt with with a bag. All right, we got another card that we just sold. Uh, 11, oh, I don't know why it says 920. This should be 1120. Put the wrong uh, month date on it. 11, 20, bag 2. Let's see where that would be right up here. Oh, and I even wrote 920 on it. That's funny. Um, probably good because if I go to find a card later down the road, I'll be like, there's nothing in 920. So probably just leave it 920. So I sold this Mike Messina Collector Fest monthly magazine um, card. Uh, love the oddball stuff. That's all for $2.99. It's a nice quick flip there. I listed it yesterday, sold it for $2.99. Again, came in my big monster box buy, so it was, you know, probably five or eight cents, something like that total. All right, that's it for the sales today. Appreciate you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think on buying and your current buying strategies. If you need help on buying, if you have tips for buying, um, let's share and get that going.